Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to my final video for the year. This means I've actually kept a New Year's resolution. I honestly don't remember the last time I even made one, but I'm pretty sure this is the only one I've ever actually kept. So if you remember back in the spring, I had built a UV sterilizer. And at that time, I had used it to control some ick. And I said, well, what I wanted to do was, the only other thing I ever use a UV sterilizer for is to control algal outbreaks, like this one. And what I was going to do is I was going to wait until I had a client uh, call me up and say they had an algae problem, and if I could, you know, take care of it for them. Well, that sort of thing usually happens in the spring and the fall. And spring came and went, nothing happened. The fall came and went, and again, I uh, didn't get any calls, so I got tired of waiting. Now what I did is, in the first clip we saw in this video, is I, during the summer, I managed to go and collect some pond water, and I got a really nice, healthy, continual algal bloom growing in those cultures. And then, so what I needed to do is take that culture and <laughs> inoculate, and have it grow and be stable in an aquarium. Since the new rack has individual tanks, uh, I figured that would be the best place for it. And what I did is I <laughs> decided that the, probably the most rich in nutrient tank for that would be where I'm breeding my plecos. So as you can see, I have a nice healthy pea soup growing here in this tank. This is uh, my pleco tank. I breed them in here. And also there are some uh, tiger endlers. So I started this, I think, probably about two months ago. Like, I wanted to make sure it was a good, healthy, stable culture. Like, I did normal water changes like I do for all the other the regular systems. And the only thing that this tank gets more than the other ones is it gets fed a lot more food, and there's also a lot less plant life. So, like I said, I kept this going. I kept it going for quite a while, probably longer than I needed to, but I didn't want to have any doubt that it was a stable um, culture growing. So here it is here from the front view and what I'm going to do shortly is I'm going to stick my hand in it. <laughs> and The glass is actually clean except for those water spots you see. And then I'm going to move my hand back about I think about four inches if I remember correctly and you're going to see my hand pretty much just disappear. That's how how thick the algae is growing in this tank. But you see the glass is nice and clear. You can see my hand plainly. And as I move it back, that's about four inches, and you can just see a vague shadow. And this tank is two feet deep. Now, before I get into the structure of, you know, what I did and how it all worked, unfortunately, there's got to be a whole pile of technical jargon and also some conditional statements. This is all in an, an attempt to stave off a bunch of comments like I got in the first video. A bunch of them said, this is not a UV sterilizer, uh, there's no way it could produce uh, short enough wavelengths of light to uh, earn that label. And technically they're right. This is uh, a UV inhibitor. It does produce UV, uh, it doesn't get down into the C's or B's. You need, you need a, uh, a lamp with mercury in it and a considerably higher um, current to get down to the lower uh, wavelengths. But it does get into the UV, uh, definitely A, and I think a little bit into B, but only marginally. But that's not really necessary. It's not the reason why I built this. I built this as a UV inhibitor, and I, but calling it that is, doesn't sound right. Uh, so it does do its job well enough. I mean, it really, really helped with uh, the ick outbreak I had. And my purpose here is to control an algae outbreak without using chemicals. I don't like using chemicals on a tank because it causes issues with the fish and snails and other things. So I wanted to do it in a least invasive way as possible. So what I'm going to do here is <laughs> go into the second batch of conditional statements. Normally when I treat an algal outbreak, the first thing I do is I put on a diatom filter and remove all the algae floating in the water. I'm actually going to do that in a video coming out because I want to take that um, water polisher I did and I'm going to convert it. But that's for another video. So what I do is I get it so, I mean, a client doesn't want 
to wait two weeks for this to be clear. They want it clear, and that's the way it has to be. So what I do is I immediately remove all of the floating algae, and then because there's gravel, uh, there's always, and filter and stuff, is always a little bit left over. So the next thing I do is I will I do a big water change to get some of the a nutrient that's in the water reduced to the point where uh, the algae has a harder time coming back. And then I hook up a UV sterilizer. I'm doing absolutely none of that for this. I'm trying to stack the deck as against this working as possible because I want to see if it actually does work and do what it needs to do on its own. The only thing I'm going to do that's different than I've been doing all along is I have to do a little bit more in the way of water changes because if you kill off something uh, you end up producing a nutrient for bacteria and you could end up with a bacterial bloom in the tank and I don't want that. I like these plecos. I mean I have baby fish in here. I want them to survive. So the only thing I'm going to do is a few extra water changes just to help uh, control any kind of extra nutrient that may show up. Everything else is going to remain the same. So hopefully I've not put you guys to sleep. <laughs> that is all. That is the end of all the technical aspects of it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you. I'm going to hook up this thing, and we're going to get down to the actual meat of what happened. <laughs> so here's the UV sterilizer, <laughs> and yes, I'm just going to keep on calling that UV inhibitor. Just doesn't sound right to me. Uh, it is exactly the same as it was before, except. In, I've, I've lengthened this cable so I can plug into the power supply easier and also I put a, a, a strip of aluminum underneath it just to keep it flat and level. And the other thing is, this is not a new system anymore. I've used it. Uh, these uh, light tapes have some hours on them now. I've used it a couple of times to control ick and uh, bacterial outbreaks. So this is not the ideal test conditions. This is actually more like a real world one where, you know, like you don't have, it's not fresh out of the box and everything is as best as it's ever going to get. So I've hooked up a pump here. The last time I used uh, the system to run it, but now uh, because this is like <laughs> an individual tank, uh, I use these little water pumps. I really do like them. Hooked up a bushing. We're going to hook up that up to uh, the half inch uh, PVC and we're going to get this all running. Now one other thing I want to state during this is, uh, you remember from a couple weeks ago, I uh, did some videos and uh, stating like how busy I was and how tired I was and uh, I was making some mistakes. Well this is made right during that time. Uh, like I said, it was at peak of the number of hours I was working and I said, well, hey I have this power supply right here. Well I don't need to hook up a new power supply, I can just connect right to that. It has, it has two outlets. It's designed to run two separate systems. There's, this one here is what it's running currently, and then when I build a new rack next year on the, the shelf above this, it's going to run the lights for that as well. The problem is, it's on a timer. and this is, So this was only running for eight hours a day. What I normally do for UV sterilizers is I run them 24-7, uh, both pump and light. That way it gives it the most chance to do its job. <laughs> so, this ran for about two days, and I was thinking, well, you know, it's running. Of course, I only go down in the fish room during the day. I don't go down there at night and check how things are doing in the middle of the night. So, it didn't really clue in. But anyway, so I'm going to do I'm gonna pan down here. I'm going to show you the soup again before we go on to about two days later. And try and remember what this looks like. And it's, I should probably do a side-by-side. -side. I might do that at the end. But here, this is what the tank looks like. It's nice and thick. Uh, you can just barely see an endler swimming by there. And then we're going to switch over to two days later. Now keep in mind, this is only run for two eight-hour sessions over two days. The rest of the time, the algae had a you know, free reign to regrow and come back. The other thing I've done is I've done one uh, additional small water change, just you know, because that's the regimen I do. So here's my hand. I'm going to move it back about a foot before it disappears, so it's already done really quite well. And that's, uh, that's kind of cool considering it was only, like I said, two eight-hour sessions. But then, like I said, this is the day I realized that, well, this is dumb. I, need, I hooked up an additional, like its own power supply, hooked up the pump to a, its own power uh, uh, outlet, and now I'm running it 24-7.
for this is about another three uh three or four days i'm not sure entirely like i said i was really tired at this point so i wasn't keeping as good a notes as i should have but this is now not even a week yet and you can see there's a lot of particles floating in the water because like i said i didn't want to do any filter cleaning i wanted this to be as bad a situation as possible for this thing to work through so what i'm going to do now after i've seen that it's starting to work and the thing is doing quite well I am going to clean the filters and also I'm going to hook up the water polisher that I've been uh, testing out just because it'll be a little extra give me a little extra clarity I don't want any particles floating in the water to cloud things up to make it look uh, less clean and then I'm gonna let this run for a few days uh, like I said I'm doing a few water changes um, but now we're getting to the point where the water changes aren't necessary anymore because there's not as much material to kill off so I just want to make sure the nutrient levels are as stable as possible. And also, I'm feeding regularly and everything else and all that sort of stuff. And then what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to, like a, this is the whole setup. This is now, uh, I think, full two weeks. That's including the two days where it was only running for the eight hours, and the rest of the time was full time. I've cleaned all the filters. You can see they're, they're nice and shiny again. And this is it. Uh, it works. I'm going to show you one final clip at the end here of the tank with everything removed and I've cleaned the glass <laughs> so you can get a nice clean look of it. But as far as I'm concerned this is a success. Like I said I've only done a few extra water changes and this is just the UV sterilizer doing its job. If you like this style of video please like and or subscribe and uh, I think this is really quite cool. This is the uh, the chamber I'm going to be using for the diatom filter. Uh, I'm going to be doing that video uh, next year. Uh, just to show you how quickly diatom filters work. It's uh, really quite speedy. And uh, other than that, this is the tank. Two weeks into the, like I said, uh, everything's been un unhooked now, uh, except the UV sterilizer. I'll let it run for a little while longer. Then uh, after, like, probably over the holidays, I'll turn that off and see if there's actually any um, algae that's going to come back at all. I don't know if it will. I have done, I've used commercial UV sterilizers before and I've had bounce backs so I don't think that's really going to be a, a negative for this but it, I want to see if it's going to do that because it's, it's important. I want to see if it's actually gotten rid of it all or it's just sort of keeping it under control while it's running. Uh, and then I'll let you know about that as well. And here's the final side-by-side -side comparison. My apologies for this video going so long, but I, I really had to put this part in because it is really a night and day uh, comparison. There's, uh, I mean, in the right you see it's always two feet back. And this is the clip I had done initially showing you me putting my hand in the tank and how it disappeared four inches back. So, I mean, that's, uh, that's a drastic change. I mean, you can't ask for a better uh, situation in this. I mean, if I had done it the other way around, like I normally do, uh, it would look like this again, but there would be doubt whether as it got cleaned by the UV sterilizer or it just got removed by, you know, the diatoms. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.